All right, shalom, shalom, everyone. This is Shaheena Israel. We're here again woo, with another Yehuda Project. I'm glad to be here today. It has been a long day, and I'm glad it's over. There's been so much stuff going on, I don't even know where to start. I really don't have anything to talk about for real other than the fact that black folks is getting ready for the 4th of July. I don't get it. They're getting ready to celebrate <laughs> the 4th of July. The, 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 the holiday that, that, the, that the Gentiles celebrates, the Independence Day. Yeah. And, and, you know, you just look at them in these, at these times when it's, it's, it's difficult. It is, it's really difficult to see the state that our people are in because they get ready to barbecue and party and drink and have a good old time. You know, and the guy walked up to me on my job. He said, you getting ready to fire up the grill? I said, nope. He said, well, why? I said, we were slaves then. We were not celebrating nothing. That's day holiday. We were slaves. And they getting ready to go party. So, I mean, you know, it's just another. It's, these are the hardest times for me because when we go through these holidays for these people, you just get to see the mentality of where the people are. You know, in, in terms of, of, of the things that are important. And then they look at you like there's something wrong with you because you're not participating. You know, and I used to. I used to get caught up in all of it, too, you know, so I can't say to myself that I'm totally numb to the situation because I was right there with them. But, boy, when your eyes come open, it's like, why don't you just stop? Just stop because we don't have to do that. We don't have to do none of this. We can com- completely be separate. And do our, and do the high holy days and come together and have a holy convocation. That's what the Most High wants. That's what He said is to have a holy convocation, come together, enjoy each other's company, and enjoy the high holy days. But I mean, you know, here we go again, and we might as well brace ourselves because this is just one of many. You know, because right after this we got Labor Day, and then after that we got Halloween, and then after that just come Thanksgiving, and, it just, and then after that it come Christmas, and it just cycles over and over and over and over and over again. Now, we steady yelling and screaming to the people, wake up, stop doing it. Nobody seems to be listening to us today. I don't know. So how do you feel about this? I mean, I know you guys have family members out there. Let's do something a little different. How, what approach have you taken to try to get your family members to understand the transition that you made? You know, what are some of the things that you've done in terms of trying to get them to see. Now, if, if everybody on this line is family is, is woke, hey, it doesn't apply to you. But for the ones who are new and they come into this knowledge, and, you know, we got to brace you, brace yourself, because you're going to go through a mountain of emotions. I just want you to know it's going to be a mountain of emotions. You're going to be excited. You're going to want everybody to know. You're going to want everybody to understand and feel what you feel. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be abandoned. You're going, it's just a whole lot of things that's going to happen because their their eyes, they can't see it. And they can't see it. So we don't want everybody to get upset. You know, one thing I tell everybody is, you know, for me, you know, I started out with the same thing. I know because I went through it. I was excited. I had to tell somebody. When I started telling them, everybody went, ooh, wow, ooh, wow. And then it wore off. And they went back to doing what they was doing. They did. They went back to doing what they was doing, and, and I ended up con- continued doing what I was doing, and, and here we are today, you know. And, and, you know, I have to watch it. The hardest part is to watch the people who, who know go back and do something else. You know, these people know. They don't want to accept it because they don't want to be held uh, guilty for knowing and, and not accepting it, so they pretend like they don't really understand it, but they do. They really do. You know, so I just, I want to share that with you today. You know, maybe somebody want to share, you know, how how your family has been treating you different. You know, some of the things that you had to go through. Some people have husbands and wives that are not conscious. Very difficult place to be. Very, very difficult place to be. Because there's so much that you want to share. and There's so many things you want to do together. And you can't because one person is pulling in one direction and the other person is pulling in another direction. Very difficult. No? 
You know, I, 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 I can only imagine, you know, what that must feel like to have that kind of a situation too. But you know what it does? It sharpens us. It gets us prepared because there's going to be some tough skin. We're going to need some tough skin, you know, for what's coming. We are. We're going to need some tough skin for what's coming because there's going to be a whole lot of people that's going to turn against you. They are. The, very, the closest people to you will end up turning against you. You know, so it is, you know, we have to we have to be very, very uh, uh, diligent and we have to keep our eyes open and be grounded. And that's what I want. You know, that's my desire. That's my prayer. I hope you guys are, are, are meeting us in prayer on, at 6 o'clock a.m. in the morning because it's good when you pray before you leave the house and, and whatever your day is going to be about. But my, my prayer is that we become grounded. That's the whole purpose for the Bible classes and the radio shows so that we become grounded because there are so many different people out there that are Israelites, that are conscious, that's being tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. You know, and you have to get grounded. And the best way to do that is to just know the story. You know, it's a lot of precepting going on, but just read the story. It'll let you understand, you know, who's in charge and who's in control. But uh, it's very it's very difficult, you know, to know. So we, we want everybody to be grounded so that when you run into these situations with family, with husbands, with wives, with children, you know how to handle yourself. You, you, you can give an answer. You know, sometimes it doesn't want an answer at all. Sometimes you just don't say anything at all to them. You know, you just let them be them. As hard as it is for you to see it, you let them be them. And then you go on and continue to serve Yah. You know, because it's something that we have to do, you know, and, and, and leave it in the hands of the Most High and let him do it, because he'll do it. He'll do it for you. You know, I believe that there's nothing he'll withhold from you. That's what the scripture says. There's no good thing he'll hold from those who walk up right before him. He'll do it for you. You just got to trust him enough to do it and let go of it, because I've noticed something with him. I've asked him for things. And I've asked him to do things for me, just little things. It's not anything major to anybody else. But when I forgot about it and I went on about my life, I looked up and they were done. And I'm like, well, where did you do that? You know what I'm saying? And I realized that he had done it. And I gave him the praise and the honor and the glory. So he'll do those things. You know, you just have to keep doing it. Be about his business and he'll handle yours. You know, but in the meantime, don't get discouraged. Please don't get discouraged. I don't want you to get discouraged over anything you hear on this radio show. Don't ever get discouraged. You know, because people are going to be coming from all walks of life. They're coming from all walks of life on this show. You know, and they, and they come and they know, they have their knowledge that they know. They come, they have their emotions. They come, they, they're going through all kinds of things. But don't get discouraged. That's all I'm telling you. Hold on, you know, because we know how to handle this. We do. We've been doing this for, we've been doing this radio show for about, what, six, seven years? If, if not that long, at least, and let me, let me not tell a lie. I'm going to find out for sure. I'm going to go back in the archives and find out. But we've been doing this radio show for a long time. So we understand. I don't think it's been six years. I'm going to find out, though, for real. Um. I'm not quite sure how long it's been, but I'm definitely going to look into the archives and see. But, yeah, so we've been on here a long time, you know, and we've been doing those things that we understand y'all don't want us to do to just let people talk. I got re- I received an email from a young woman, and it blessed me. It really did. It blessed me because she was talking about, you know, the radio show Sunday and the things that happened on Sunday. You know, and you guys don't think that we read them. We read everything that comes our way, everything, you know. So I just want to, you know, she, she really did bless me, you know, and I, I thank you for that. You know, I really do thank you for that. That was truly a blessing because it was needed. You know, it definitely was needed, you know, and I, I, and I, I believe, look, I love everybody. I don't have an ill feeling in my heart. I don't have one, you know, and I really do care for everybody, you know, and, and I want everybody to, I want all of us to make it to the wilderness. I want everybody to make it to the wilderness, you know. So I just thank you for that. You know, we're just doing what we need to do. 
And sometimes we lose people along the way, but they'll come back. They come back. They always do. You know, they come back. Because we have much love. We do. We love them. You know, but, you know, sometimes it's tough love. It is. It does what it does. And we have to let it do what it do. So if you want to share some of your experiences with us today, we have the mic open. You know, you definitely can push one. We'd love to hear, you know, how you feel, you know, because we have a lot of people that are part of the Nation of Yehuda and their family members are beginning to call in after two, three years of watching them live their lives. That's why I tell everybody, you don't have to holler, just live it. You don't have to convince, just live it. You know, and they'll see. And their mem- their family members are starting to call in and listen. Well, wonder what this is all about. Look, let me at least listen in, because it don't cost nothing to listen. Let me see what this is all about. And, and they were very, a lot of them are, are continuing to call in. Because these are things they have never heard before. People in the church have never heard about the wilderness. They don't know nothing about Rome being the fourth beast, and that's the government that's going to be in place before we leave. They don't know nothing about none of that. You know, but they continue to, they they come and they hear it, and it's like, wow, you know, this is something different. We've never heard this. Just like the lady said on Saturday in in the Bible class, she said, why come they're not teaching this in the church? You know, but this is why we give the information, so that you will have it, and you can share it with your own family so you can be prepared when the time comes to know what to do. Because what if we're not here? And I believe me, I don't want to be responsible for anyone's fate. I don't. I don't. I'm, 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 I'm getting to know y'all's voice just like you are. You know, and I'm feeling my way just like you are. We learning this thing together. All together, we learning this thing. You know, but I believe if we could stay consistent, and we let the Most High lead, He'll lead and guide us into all truth. We'll know what to do. You know, we will. You'd be surprised how much influence we have had on this radio show. I was telling Sister LaVia today, I heard, um, I was listening to one of the programs, CNN or Fox News, and they were talking about the immigrant children. And he was like, well, we've developed a new system. We're taking pictures of the children and the, and the, and the parents together, and we're giving them a number. And we just told them to do that a couple of days ago on Sunday. We just told them to do that. So believe me, they listen to us. They listen to everything we say, you know, and all praises to the Most High, you know, because we just want results. But, you know, it's just, like I said, you know, if you want to push one, please feel free to do one. Now, you know, whenever you get ready, if you want to share some experiences, but let's deal with this Africa thing because this thing is really starting to pick up momentum. And uh, I don't know how you all feel about Africa. I don't I don't know what your 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 uh what your thoughts are on it, you know, but it's a lot of stuff going on in, around now about us going to Africa. You know, and that's where they picked us up from. You know, that's where they picked us up from. That's where we ran into Africa. You know, but I'm just not 100% convinced that that is the the best move, you know. I'm I'm we, I don't know. We just gonna have to pray about that. You know, if anybody has any thoughts on that or anything like that, please feel free also to push one. You guys awfully quiet today. I mean, real quiet. But um, yeah, we can get to that point. You know, I'm not. I don't plan on going to Africa because that's not what he said. He didn't tell us that we would be going to Africa. He said we would be going to the wilderness. Now he did say he would lure us over there. Now, how are we going to get lured over? I don't know. I have no idea. They're, they're, they talk about us flying in and boats of Tarshish coming to get us, but that's, that, we don't know when that's going to be either. So, again, you know, this Africa thing, pray about it. If you choose to go, you go on your own accord because Yaina's not telling anybody to go anywhere. I'm not. Because I don't know anything about it. Yah hasn't confirmed it. He hasn't done anything at all in terms of, you know, where he, where, how he wants us to do this. So I don't want to say, you know, well, I know what y'all, I'm sitting right here and waiting on the most high. Now, I know we will be leaving, you know, but I just want to share that with you because I want you to understand there's a lot of people that are anxious. There's a lot of people, Israelites, that are excited. They're new. They're new to this thing, and they're excited, 
and sometimes they put a tin on stuff and they, they build this big hype around it, and then when it doesn't happen, you know, they go back to the drawing board. And I've seen it so many times. I really have. I've seen it so many times with the blood moons and all that. And, you know, they'll get a prediction from the heathen and say, this is it, it's, this is it, it's over. Ain't nothing else going to happen after this. And then they'll, get, they'll start packing up stuff and, get, and then nothing happens. Nothing. That's why it's so important that I, you stay grounded. It's very important, you know, because I see those things and they come and go. Those are the things that we have to look for. They come and they go. And this is what we have to do. We have to continue to stay grounded so that we will be able to move when the most high say move because if not, you'll be jumping and flipping and it's getting ready to get worse. It is getting ready to get worse. You can, we we haven't seen anything yet, but as we move forward and we move into this thing and and we start to begin to see the Most High's hand and the power, you know, we gonna see more things than this. And you've got to make sure that you know that you're not supposed to move unless you know for sure that it's Him. Under no circumstances, you know. So I I just want to share that with you. That's why. I have to I have to be a guardian here. I have to guard the ear gate, and so to speak. I have to. It's my responsibility to do that. You know, because I I want if if, if you know if, if it's someone else or you want to go somewhere else or listen to something else, that's going to be on from you. You know, but I, I have to be able to do that because it's so important. You know, so I just want to share that with you, you know, so that you know where I stand and how I feel about everything. Because I'm not, you know, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to be responsible for anybody going astray. Anybody, you know. But guess what? The brighter news is our 2018 State of the Nation address is coming up in all in September, the first weekend in September. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody that's coming. You know, um, most people didn't get a chance to come last year. Well, we had a nice crowd, but we're going to have more people this year. And I think it's going to be wonderful. We're going to actually, uh, we're going to have some things on display and show you how we're going, what we're going to wear and how we're going to dress and the things that we're going to carry with us. So it's going to be very exciting to see those things and, you know, have, have everybody come to fellowship together and do the Sabbath class together as well. You know, so we're looking forward to that because this will be the last time that we'll meet in Cincinnati, Ohio, until the 2019 Day of Repentance. We will be headed to Washington, D.C. to be able to do our prayer. And, you know, and I think and I think that it is going to be a very solemn prayer. It's going to be very spiritual. You know, but even then, people are getting emotional. They're like, man, I probably won't be able to do nothing but cry, you know, and until you get there, you know, and until you get there. And I've been praying for y'all. You know, the people are expecting something. You know, we've been in captivity for 400 years. We're expecting something. They're expecting you to show up. They They want to see you. They want they want you to show your presence in some kind of way, you know, and, and humbly asking if he would, you know, but if he chooses not to, he doesn't. It doesn't take away from the power and the strength that all of that brings as a people because it's supposed to be us going to him and giving him an apology. That's what it's supposed to be. And asking that he deliver us from these places and take us into the wilderness because that's where the safety is going to be at. You know, it's not going to be, you know, it's just it, that's where it's going to be at. So we have to do that, you know, and that he, once he turns around and faces us, that he accepts our apology, you know, and that we move forward in that aspect so that we can get this thing done because I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go just like everybody else is. I really am. I am ready to go just like everybody else is, but, I understand something about him. You cannot force him. He does not move on your time. He has everything set in place. There's a specific time frame, and he's going to move in that time frame and do what it is that he's called to do. You know, so it, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, that we learn. We have to learn his character, and that's why we read the scriptures, because that's the best way to learn about him. None of us have had a personal conversation with him where we've sat down at the dinner table and he said, this is my strategy. 
I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. And then this is what I need you to do. He doesn't do that. He wrote it in a book. And he wants us to read the book so that we understand that he changes not. This is the same Elohim. He said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. You know, so there is a part of his character that we have to understand and how he responds and how he doesn't respond. And that has been so problematic for some people. And I don't know whether it's fear or whatever it is because they, they, want, they don't want to accept that this is who he is. And there's no, you know what I'm saying? It, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, I just, I just, you know, like I said, when I understood it, it, it was a bit much. It was. It was a bit much to know that he loves us. Yes, he does. But that he put us in this position. He did this. You know, and then when I realized why he did it, I was like, wow. You know, so there, there, there's no happy ending you know, to the fact that we're here. It's just that he has a he has an exit strategy for us to leave. But even with that, the power that he exhibits when we leave, it's still going to be some shifting and sifting and, and, and discarding of people. You know, he's still going to cut off a certain portion of us. You know, and that that's a lot to have to contend with because we've been taught all these years that it's about love. It is. It is. It's about love. You know, but his love surpasses all understanding. We can't figure it out. You know, how can you steal after all? You know, what kind of love is this, that, that you can put us in this position and have us go through the things that we've gone through and deliver us the way you plan on doing it? You know, how can you be without us for so long and then turn around and face us again as a people? You know, how could you watch it? How could you watch the demise of so many of our family members and ancestors and things like that but left us alive to tell the story? You know, this, 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 that's the Elohim I know. You know, that's what I had to deal with. You know, wow. You know, he did this. He did this to us, to teach us, to show us, to warn us. This can never happen again. You know, how could you let us be deceived like we was deceived? But he did because we had to understand what we did to him. And every time I would get a revelation or a knowledge, he said, now you see what I went through. Now you see what you did to me. You know, and I used to tell him, if I could repent for the whole nation, I would. But it's not about me. You know, because no man, no one man can stand and repent for the whole nation. This has to be a collective effort, you know. This is this is this this, is, this being is something that none of us understand. We just can't get it, but we love him. We do. I know I do. You know, I can understand his position. You know. Thank God we was chosen, because we could be a part of the other nations that don't have a clue. It make you want to go somewhere and crawl in the corner and bawl and just cry and just tell, I've done that too, how sorry I am. You know, just let me, and please forgive me for the things that I have done, you know. But he keeps on loving. He keeps on blessing. He keeps on opening up. And he's just been a little sanctuary. I see you 904. He's just been a little bitty sanctuary. And it's still been stuff that's noticeable. We can still say, if it had not been for, I don't know where I would be in this captivity. And he keeps doing it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Whew. Mm -hmm. Area code 904, go ahead, your mic is open, you're on the air. Hello? We can't hear you. Your phone might be on mute. All right. Um, is it better? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you now. Okay. Um, you know, I, you know, I was listening. I mean, I've been listening to to the radio show, and um, I've I've listened to to other, you know, 
he um Israel Israelite. And I, mm-hmm. I from the church. I've been out the church for years. I was into I was in a house that um I don't know if you remember me sharing, you know, they it's it's a lot of mix it's a good mixture of people, different races, I guess, but more so black people in the house that was coming from, but they're being taught, you know, I guess the, the Jewish way, and to me there's really no difference. Now, I'm not saying this to, or I'm not going to even ask this question to cause a problem. I'm sorry about that noise. But, um, oh, you can ask the question. Go ahead, ask it. I want to know. Because um, I'm, I'm just curious. Now, for me, I believe the whole word. I, I really do. Um, I, I'm not, from, I know that no, no one knows everything. And I know that mm-hmm. God is real. And I know that um, if we, I'm, I'm not easily moved by people. I've been that person, you know, where I used to believe everything. But y'all really dealt with me. He allowed me to bump my head several times. No, I'm not um, skilled. You know, I'm not, I'm not a scholar, I'll say, in the word. But I do know this. I know y'all is real. And it's, it's him mm-hmm. that I go to when I have questions. I'm not moved by nothing no one say. No one can take me off of anything because if I don't know, that it's, I'm not just going to take someone's word for it. I go to y'all because I know he's real. And you will answer mm-hmm. because I've never in my life, I've never heard anyone say the black people were Israel. I never. Mm-hmm. I, I've never been taught that ever. You know who told me? Y'all did. Mm-hmm. And when I see people mm-hmm. that, they don't believe me because they think that someone said it because this, this news has been out here for a, a while. I've never heard this. I've never in my life heard this. This year, um, I... I asked the father, why do, why do black people open so much? Because I was just seeing all this stuff, you know, that this whole race stuff coming back again, and all this mess is going on. It seemed like stuff, like a, I don't know, like a rebirth of race. Not that it's a rebirth of racism. It's always been there. I've been treated all kinds of ways by, you know, white people, so called white people. I've, I've been called a nigger and all that kind of stuff. But I was just noticing how it's arrived until this year. You know, it was on my heart to, I don't know, it was just heavy on my heart about what, what black people are going through. And when I asked that question, this is what y'all told me. Because one thing I do know from having been in the church and being a so-called Christian and all this kind of stuff, I knew from the things that y'all have taken me through, I knew the relationship with him is important. He <laughs> didn't to know his, his voice because he, he allowed me to, to be taught here and there because I believed everything people said, just gullible, naive. So I'm saying this to say that even with everything, no no one can change my, my mind about what I believe about. Um, I, people call them different names. The house I came from, um, with the Jewish way they were learning, it was Yeshua. Yeah, I don't hear Yahushua, Yehoshua, you know, um, but mm-hmm. his son. You know, I'm not moved by it. I hear all these different names, and believe me, I hear all these different things, too. But... I don't take this to anyone because I, I hear so many different stories coming from people. I go to Yah. He's the one that gives me the the peace of mind. I can't explain it. You know, he. Yeah, it's just kind of hard to, to me um, to explain a powerful Elohim or God. Or however, you know, if you want to call him, it's it's it, it's hard to explain him and how he speaks and moves and does the thing and stuff because he's it's supernatural so to speak. It's, it's, it's not like a natural way and I can't explain it. I take it to him. There's been, you know, certain things that I've been confused about but I go to him because I hear so many different things that I've noticed that come into this. You know, it seems no different in my opinion than mm-hmm. church <laughs> because mm-hmm the church, everybody thought they knew everything, and people were blown up in what they knew because they read the word, not they come up, not that, I, wanna, I don't want to say they came up with the revelation, because I don't know if the Father gave them that interpret, and, you know, if he revealed something to them or not, but I don't see a difference, other than I found out that through, through, through God, that we are Israel. You know, and, and especially the only difference from coming out of the house that we learned in the Jewish way is, um, you know, I I can't say this. I have never in my life heard of a Yiddish language, but when I was in that house and we were learning the Jewish way, I kept hearing the word Yiddish. I've never heard that before, but I was hearing that, you know, in my spirit, and I realized once, once 
y'all told me who we were, and I've heard this through the teachings that that was actually God, you know, telling me what that language was. You know, so I, I agree. I wasn't, I'm not moved by people saying this, that, and other Hebrew, because in my opinion, I think, I honestly believe that no one really knows, you know, a whole lot when it comes to, now, yes, it's a lot in his word, but because people can take his word and, and interpret it. So I've, I've seen the word interpreted in so many, it's the same scripture. Mm-hmm. And single people <laughs> interpret it all kinds of ways. And, you know, when I saw that, and this was when I was a so-called Christian, so coming in, this this stuff doesn't move me. And I'm not talking about mm-hmm. us being it's who y'all is. I'm talking about I'm not moved by so there's confusion, any confusion that I do feel, or that I'm, I look, I hear something that sounds totally different than 30,000 other people, than what some 30,000 other people said before. I just go to y'all, because I know this much, that he's not the author of it. You know, he's not the author of confusion, if, and if there is confusion, it's, it, it's time for you to not even, don't even make a decision on it. And you better go, the decision that you better make is to go to the Father. And I kind of heard you, you know, um, you, you said that in so many words, or, or you said it anyway. I, I think you just plainly said it, that, you know, we should take things to, to Yah. We should take mm-hmm. things to the Father. And I, mm-hmm. I do that. You know, I'm, this is my first time hearing about it, but only through Yah it wasn't a person. And I can't make no one believe that, that Yah told me that himself. I never heard any. You know, I've, I've seen the whole thing about kept black people, you know, black power, black cancer. You know, I've heard all this stuff. These black people trying to get this. And that, and that, you know, get together, you know, banding together for this, that, and other to gain some type of power. But I've never, never in my life been told that we were those people, that we were either that, you know, uh, Moshe, uh, Moses, you know, all of Yaakov, and that those were our ancestors. I've always, mm-hmm. deep down, when I was a kid, the father always dealt with me in this particular way. I was just speaking with him, you know, he speaking some things to me, and he, he was just sharing with me the other day, you know, that there, there is a special relationship, and I'm not saying I'm the only one, this is personally, you know, what he was saying to me, that there is a special relationship that I have with him, because he re, he's revealed things to me that I did not understand, I know what he was talking about ever since I was a kid, and this stuff is now lining up, it's not mm-hmm. anything you want to see, it's lining up. When I was a kid, I heard the father tell me, I was five, and he said, Black people have a special relationship with you. And when my, when my um, family members, they, when we were kids, they used to always have us watching these slavery movies and stuff like that. And, and I would see the, I know, you know, many black people can, can probably, you know, vouch for this and say, hey, you know, I always knew, you know, but this, this is what it was for me. I, I always knew that there was something, there was a strong connection with, um, with, with black people and, and, and God. You know, or something for what I knew um, him to be then, God. It was like their their worship, their their praise, their I don't know this relationship, or intimacy. It's it's different than what I had noticed as a kid with any other mm-hmm. race. And the order, I, it wasn't until this year, this year when he said that to me that that it made sense. Anyway, I, I'm not even telling you everything that he said to me, but. I understand. I, I understand. So, so tell I, me, what's your what's your question? My question, though, is this: with all the information that that that's out here, and and I'm not bringing this topic up because of, I, I've heard this topic brought up, and I know there are people who do not um that they're on this line, you know, that don't necessarily believe in Yahushua. And I don't know, you know, I'm trying to speak you, I don't know his, his real name, but I'm telling you this, I, I sure do believe, you know, that he is. Mm-hmm. I, with what I have read, I haven't read the whole word, but I've read a lot of the words. And mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to speak to you, I, I don't, the, new, the newness that the Father has brought me into this, what he's revealed, uh, some of it's not making sense to me, I'm not going to lie. But it's not it's not moving me if, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't all make sense. But I'm not like, oh, I want to run back to church because I do see that. I saw I I've seen people come in and get excited about, oh wow, I just like what you said. I I've seen it. 
I saw when I told people, people were like, wow, and ooh, and ah, and then they, it, it left. You know what I'm saying? I really did see mm-hmm. that. I, and I wondered to myself, like, dang, well, what is that? You know, it's like, what what happened? Some people said to me that they feel like there's it's more, and I'm about to ask the question, I'm just saying this for a reason, that they feel like it's no different than the church. They see people, mm-hmm. you know, fighting with one another, thinking they know more than another. You know, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's no different than the Christian church. I've, I've heard them say this. And I don't really know how to combat it. I don't even try to come back with anything because, in all honesty, you can see this stuff on YouTube. You know, it is like that, mm-hmm. even though mm-hmm. it says for the people. And it's also people, you know, you, I've met some Christians who <laughs> will end up saying that they don't believe in, in Jesus after a while. So it's not a That's different true. either. You know, so true. my question, though, is, I've always, everybody, I guess everybody who's been a Christian can say that they, they've heard this, that you who should have paying that for, you know, the world, you know, to save the world. You died and you rose again to save the world. I've mm-hmm. come into this new knowledge, and I'm hearing some people say, you know, when I read the word, I can see, I do see where people can point that out and say that, you know, um, the Gentiles he came for who were, actually Israelites, I can see where they get that from, and mm-hmm. then, I, you know, I hear others who say they don't even, that he's actually, excuse me, Satan, he's, um, he's not, I don't know, he's just a regular person, I've heard some people say that, but my question is, is with all this knowledge and all these differences and all these things, that what did he really come for, and I'm not saying this because I don't believe in him, you know, it's just there's that, that fusion there, it's like, okay, Father, I know your son, Israel. I believe that he died and rose with all power in his hand. I believe that he, you know, seated at the right hand um, side of you, you know, on the throne. You know, I, well, what did he come for? You know what I mean? Like, I, because of all these different things that I that I hear, I don't know if you know the answers to that. I, I do. I do. Before. I do. Whenever you're ready, I, we can go there. I mean, I do. Um... I, let me start with saying that Lucifer is real, and his job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm-hmm. And the, what he came for was the one-third. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what he came for. He, he came to redeem the one-third. That's what he came for. Because that's the one third that is going to go from mortal to immortal. What, from the way I read the story and the, the information that I have been given, and the clarity that the Most High has given me, is that the, something happened in the kingdom where a third was flung out. You know, and they were flung to the earth. The earth was created for us. Mm-hmm. to be able to live on this earth. The Most High knows all things, so he doesn't do anything uh, rash or do anything in a hurry. He knows what's going to happen before it happens. So right. he knew this. And the whole story, the whole redemption story, is to bring back the third. Now, in order to do that, 12, 12 sons had to be born. And there had to be a mother and there had to be a father. Because... The dynamics of, and see, now I'm getting into the millennial, but I'm going to mess with it a little bit tonight. The dynamic of the kingdom has everything to do with Israel. So those names didn't just come by by chance. Those are the 12 tribes of Israel that will give birth to the one-third. So the third had to come into the earth. So then you walk down the history of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the whole story of the the ones that made it in the wilderness and the ones that didn't and the ones that was killed off. Those are the two thirds. And then and we still we keep walking down the history. And then all of a sudden, because the Old Testament um, talks about the Messiah, it, it's prophesied that he's coming. And then all of a sudden he comes. And he, he and, and he makes the statement that I came, but for the lost house of Israel. Yes, he does. Very significant. Mm-hmm. It's the one third that he's redeeming. You know, so when you understand that he came for the one third, then when he came, he picked twelve disciples. You know As what? Representative. Yes, ma'am. I kind of, 
I, you know, I'm, I, like I said, I'm not a God in the world, but there's ways that the Father deals with me spiritually. I kind of, mm-hmm. you said, uh, you said so much now that I, I'm not, I get it. I can't articulate <laughs> but I get mm-hmm. it. He came for the up. one third. Now there's going to be others. There's others with us that are Israel. Mm-hmm. You know, and he called them names. He called them generation of vipers. They said we be of Abraham's seed. He said, I know you be of Abraham's seed, but you're not one of mine. Because if you was truly of Abraham, when Abraham saw me in my day, he did rejoice. So there's always been supplanters that have been supplanted among us that are Israel, and they've always done what they're doing today. They're confusing the story. But those that are his know him, and there's nothing in the world that can change it. And you're right. I've seen some people that was truly believers in the Christian church and come over here, and one man will teach them something, and they will no longer read the New Testament at all whatsoever. They won't. You know, and, and, and that's fine. I mean, you know, I don't I don't knock anybody for what they believe or what they don't believe. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, that that's just how, the, you know, you, that's where they, that's where their spirituality was in order mm-hmm. to understand, you know, where, what happened to them. And I, I, I don't knock it. I don't knock it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, one thing I know about the millennium is that when that happens, it's going to be those Israelites that are just regular people that are going to live to be hundreds of years old. We're going back to a lifestyle where they will live to be hundreds of years old. But guess what? That one-third will be supernatural. You know, now, yes, I I know that's something. You know, like I said, it's hard for me to articulate, but I I, I get that. When I was, I was 20, I think I was 20 years old, and I was living living in my, uh, my own apartment. And the father... I just want to say he, there was an encounter that I had with him. And he was saying some things to me that I didn't understand, but my spirit understood. I don't know if that makes any sense. Because <gasps> my spirit was reacting as if it understood. And, and I didn't know what in the world was going on. But even though I didn't understand what was going on, then he showed me uh I don't know if it was the reason, but I saw it. And I can't mm-hmm. think, I, I, I was overjoyed, but he showed me, me, and he didn't show me my face, but I knew it was me. I felt me, you know, I, body, I felt, he put me on a, on a robe that was covered in jewels, all these different types of jewels. I never, mm-hmm. never did that, and I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what that meant. I was like, I, I don't know. People, I, I would say this, you know, I, I think it's something that I'm, I'm, I've lost my mind or something, and I know my family does. You know, even when you talked about the subject earlier of uh, certain holidays, you know, with, when I was, the house I came out of, you know, they, you know, teaching the whole Jewish way, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of the same things that's that, um, being taught in that household. Years, I've had years of um, dealing with my family, uh, you know, not me not celebrating holidays, you know, and, and eat, not eating. So just a lot of that is still the same. And coming to this truth, you know, it's still very much the same, a little different, but very much the same. And I do deal with some some issues on that on that level. There, my family thinks that. I'm in a cult, you know, or that I'm that I've lost my mind, or that I'm deranged. But you know, to share it, to do this, and then even share things like that, like the the whole vision thing, you know, and things that I've heard and things that I've seen supernaturally, you know, my mm-hmm. my family, they they think that I'm that I've lost my mind. They they really do. Mm-hmm. They think I'm it's a cult, but that doesn't bother me because I've had years of the father separating me from my family, so that it's not that I don't love them. They probably sound cold, but for me, it's no, not a problem. I understand. I understand. But see, but see, this is the thing. Here's the thing. 
you have to understand, this is what I want to say to everybody, because I want to put this on the record. This is the nation of Yehuda, which means everybody's welcome to come. We have Messianic and non-Messianic alike, and we're reading the story together. I know that a lot of people that are on here that are non-Messianic don't believe in the Messiah. I can respect you for not. Yes. That's your choice. You know. Yes. But my thing is this. You know, we're not going to not talk about him because you don't believe him. You know, I don't, I don't shove it down anybody's throat. I don't try to make you understand because you're not. You don't understand, and there's nothing anybody can do to make you understand. So I don't do that. I, I just, I, we read, we're, read, we're in the Old Testament. We're going to be in there for a minute because it's so rich, and there's so much in there that we have to understand Yah through that. But when you under, when you understand how the story goes, it's the, it's the way the story goes, and it's, and, it, and it's hard for a lot of people to accept it. And that's good. I don't have an issue with that either. You know, it, it's up to you what you choose to believe. It, when we get to when we start talking about the Messiah and the things in the New Testament, if you want to hang up, I'm not offended. I'm not. I, I would I would I would prefer you do that than to sit here and, and 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 get offended by the things that you don't believe. You know, because we're a nation. We've got to come together as a nation. When he said he was coming back to get us, he's not just coming back for uh, the the messianic or, or just the non messianic He's coming back to get a people. Yeah. And we have to come together as a nation. And there's too much division and separation and arguing and bickering and fighting over scriptures, and that's when you know that the Most High is not in it. But I want to read something to you, and this is something that stuck with me because I had the same thought when I came over here too and I started analyzing. I was like, well, wait a minute. What was all of this for then? Right. And then the Most High gave this to me. And listen very carefully what he says. I'm in John chapter 17. He said, These words spake Yahawashai and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, because he never told anybody to worship him. He said, I came to do the will of my Father. He said, The hour is come. Glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So there is a set, there is a specific group and a specific number that the Most High has given him that he has power to give eternal life. He said, "In this this life eternal, that they might know thee, thee, the only true Elohim and Yahweh, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth." I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thy me with thine own self and with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I ain't going to mess with that one. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were. Listen what he said. He said, thine they were. They They belong to you. And thou gavest them to me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. He said, I pray for them. Watch what he said. I pray for them. I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He said, if all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. He said, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, which the scripture might be fulfilled. He said, And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He said, I have given them my word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world. Uh-oh. If they're not of the world, where are they from? 
even as I am not of the world. Let me read that again. It says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said, I pray not that thou should have taken them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which believe on me through their word that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. He said, In the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. He said, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. He said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, oh, this is about to get good. See, see, I went I, <laughs> Woo, hold on just a minute, hold on, hold He said, O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that, I, that thou hast sent me. He said, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So you dealing with something that's completely supernatural. Yes, yes he, it is. He went and got to it. Girl, you don't understand this. So when I under when that when that right there clicked, I said, "Oh, hold on, hold on. There's something else going on here. This ain't just regular, normal, ordinary folks." Right, and that's what I'm hearing as you were reading. It's funny because I'm just not hearing that because always I have even in here in reading that and in hearing it being read in church, I've always looked at that as, "Oh, he's talking about the world, like you know, the secular world, you know, you know us." Yeah. So I, if that's a total supernatural thing, when he's just in listening to you read it, I heard something totally different. Same words, but I heard something totally different. And it is totally supernatural. I mean, when he's saying us not, him not being of the world, we're being the same, you know, like that. And us knowing that that's a whole, that's another dimensional type thing. It's like, it's not even, he's not even talking about secular and like being secular, being whatever, you know, church want to call it worldly and going out there to preach. It's, I hear it. I hear it. I can't articulate it, but I hear it. I hear and, it. And, what's, and, and look at this. What's worldly? Because now that we understand we're in captivity, all of it is a mess. Even the yes. church is a mess. So yes. there's no such thing as being in the world and being worldly. It's all against y'all. So it, that's, that we throw that out the window. We throw the baby yes. in the bathwater out at the same time. So what's worldly? Yes. When you understand yes. that this is a redemption of the third that left the kingdom, that one day the kingdom is going to come down to the a new heaven and a new earth, and the Father is coming, and this will be the epicenter of the universe. This will be the kingdom. Once the redemption of the third is taken, girl, don't get me started. I'm trying to be, and you know what? Everybody don't understand that. That's why you get so much pushback. I don't yes. know what you, everybody don't get it because they're not a part of it. That's true. That's true. But he said when, you, when you when you see Israel like when you see Israel arguing over tassels, tassels and crazy stuff, it's like you you know what you you need to bring your elevate your mind up some. You got to come up. This is deeper than what you think. It's deeper. My goodness, is deep. I, you know, I'm not the best at speaking, but I hear this. I hear this loud and clear. I, I can't express to you how I do. I may not be able to explain to you how, but I hear this. I hear. What he came for the one third, to, so that they yes. would know. And, and wait a minute, not only came through, came through the womb of the woman, so he could be the example. 
to show you this is how it's done. We created this whole system set up so that you can be born and born into the world so that you can make the journey. And then when you get to the wilderness, once you overcome, you'll be a part. I'll give you eternal life. Yes, yes. Because it was mine to give. Because the Father gave it to me to give it to you. Because when you get into the millennial, you understand there's different sections. You got those that will make it, and they will become e- e- eternal. And then you got those that will make it, and they will just become normal, everyday folks with wives and children and the children playing in the street. And they will live hundreds of years old. Goodness, my goodness. You know, I'm but it's still so. going to be Israel. It's still going to be Israel. But the yes. ones that's arguing and bickering and complaining and fighting, they, they, they're going to have their day. They, they're having a moment right now because some of them are, are, are vessels of dishonor. They, they come into, you know, I've seen so many Israelite camp leaders on YouTube throwing up the same hand signals, the same Illuminati hand signals, doing all kind of crazy stuff. And I just, look, I just sit back and smile at them because guess what? They are a part of the story too, and they have to play their part. That's why I tell everybody, be grounded. No matter what you do, when you be grounded and understand understand what this thing is about because it doesn't matter what they say if you ground it. Right. You won't be moved one way or the other. You won't be moved. You just flick them off like whatever. And you keep it moving. I heard a teaching, you know, before getting on the calls and listening to the calls, I listen. I mean, I'm not saying this to trust no one up. I'm just telling you what, what I did because I was led to do this. I was, that was just how much I was strong, but I listened to every single one of the messages on um, Yehuda Project on YouTube before calling in. And then when I wasn't seeing anything else, then I started, you know, calling in. You know, you know, not, not that you don't still post, but I call in. I barely ever go to YouTube because I call in for everything. But there was this one message before um, actually calling in that I had heard um, uh, you speak on. You were talking about, I, I don't know which the message was, but I know in this message you talked about that third of, uh, I think, stars or something being cast out, you know. Mm-hmm. Heaven That's in Revelation um, chapter 12. Revelation right. chapter 12, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. By um, Lucifer, whatever his name is, the enemy. It's the tail, tail of the, the dragon. Yeah. Yes. When you, when, see, I always heard something totally different than that, but when I heard the way, the, um, the way y'all, the, what he had given you, I, I never heard that before, and it made so much sense for some reason. It, it just made sense. It made, and even with what you're saying now, all of that adds up. I, I see. I can't, I see now what, what you mean when you say why Yahushua was sent. It's totally supernatural. We were already before. The whole, just all mm-hmm. of that third part, we were already. We were before. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm all saying with the role, that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know how, I can't explain, mm-hmm. but that's what he was showing me. Mm-hmm. And I know this don't make sense. I'm not. I know that I probably sound, but I'm because I I know that I'm not a scholar. I try not to say too much. But sometimes people don't want to hear people who's not as you know skilled in the word. Yeah. And sometimes they think, but the Father speaks to. I know for me, He speaks not just for me, but I'm saying personally. You know, my relationship with Him, He tells me things that I haven't even come across in the Word, and then I come across it and realize that He spoke it. He tells me a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like He. He showed that to me, that um, um, personally. Now, I know this is for that third, but personally, when I was, um, I, I was 20, and he showed me that, that I, I, I was before. You know, like I, I was. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. You know, he, I don't know how to explain that, but that's what that was. I couldn't, I, 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 I don't know what the significance of the role, but I was doing. If I could tell you how beautiful that robe was, it was filled with jewels. I don't know what that meant, but that's what he was showing me. Mm-hmm. I, I, isn't that not making sense, but, you know. No, yes, that, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let me tell you, when I came on the scene and, and I came into Israel and I, I got my feel of Israel and I met some Israelites, I said, and, you know, they looked at me real crazy. I said, but, you know, we were, we were the gods at one point. Right. They was like, what? They was like, yeah, you tripping. I said, no, we were. I said, we were the gods. I said, and something happened where we lost our status of being gods. 
That's right. And then you know the, the Egyptians came. I mean, the, the Egyptians came out with this. We gods already. I'm a god already. All I got to do is speak this and so on. And I watched that whole thing go down. I just sat back. I didn't say nothing. I said, No, we were the gods at one point. And the Most High had to come back and redeem us from God's status. So you know, and, and when you understand Adam and Eve, they were already supernatural. Yeah, yep, yep. They were already yep. they were they were already in the image of Yah, so they was already supernatural. And had the story proceeded the way it was supposed to, then guess what would have happened? They would have gave birth to supernatural children. They would just burst out with supernatural <laughs> children. And that's how it was supposed to be, you know. But because the enemy came in and did what he did, they lost their status in the garden, and then they had to, and then they they sinned. So then here comes the the the. the the path of redemption through the sin, and that's when Christ came in on the scene in the Garden of Eden, because there there, there had to be a showdown. Because what I, the way I read it is that Cain, being the seed of the serpent, whose ever son was born first, got the keys to the kingdom, and that's wow. how Lucifer became the god of this world. So something, something the most high sprang into action, like I'm gonna send my own son. Mm. And it's gonna be a showdown, you know. So you know when you when and it, oh my goodness, I mean you know it's just so much. It's you know, but everybody don't hear it, they don't understand it. I ain't trying to convince nobody of nothing. <laughs> I'm you. It's just that's when you know the power of the story. You know that it's, it's more than just it's more than just fringes and, and feast days. It's bigger than this. They're so caught up on going up and wearing wearing uniforms and fringes and feasts. It's bigger than this. You're talking about God's status. That's right. He, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He turned Moshe into a God. Mm. He told him, I'm going to turn you into a God. Whatever you say is going to come to pass. He took, a, he took a human being that was born from the womb of a woman and turned him into a God. Wow. He did that thing. And then we sit back talking about it ain't going to be no magical, mystical, I don't know what you're talking about. You can really get the wake up of your life. We don't know y'all. We think he's, we, he we don't know him. He's been invisible for so long. We don't know him. Yes, I, I say that all the time. Father, this new never right here, I'm like, I never knew you. I never knew you. I'm just now getting a little pinched. You know what I'm saying? Like, this newness that I'm learning is I realized that I didn't know him. Even though he showed me and said what he said, I still did not know him. And that that's where my heart is, you know. And I and I don't mean that in a way like I can't get known, but I, I know I don't learn him all over. over. And then you know what the lady asked me? She says, and this has been a big argument in, in Israel. Well, if he told us we ain't supposed to be drinking blood, then how can he turn around and tell us we have to eat his flesh and drink his blood? That's totally contradictory. Yeah, but okay. did you do it when he was living? Because he didn't make you do nothing when he was living. True. He ain't never told you to do that. And, and there's no record of anybody doing it. And that's when he revealed to me the power of the resurrection. He said, I had holes in my body. And I, and I, you know what, and I was still in the church at the time. I was like, you had holes in your body. He said, read, I had holes in my body. And I said, you sure did. You had holes in your hand, you had holes in your feet, and you had a hole in your side. You sure did. He said, but I was still walking, and I was talking, and I was eating, and I was walking through walls, and I was transforming my, myself where I was not noticeable, but I wasn't bleeding. Oh, mm -mm -mm. that is. <laughs> <laughs> that right there, I was like, oh, my goodness. You sure wasn't bleeding. He yeah, said, cause if yeah. it was blood there, he said, I would have bled to death. He said, but remember I told you flesh and blood can't enter. Powerful. So, girl, girl, look, I'm going to tell you something. Get ready to enjoy the ride. That's all I can tell you. For the ones that's hooping and hollering, I don't believe in them. Fine, be on that side. If that's how you feel, more power to you. We still love you. We're going to keep it moving. Get ready to enjoy the ride because you're getting ready to see something you have never seen before. Yes, you you right. really are. Yes. yes, yes you really yes, are. Yes. 
It's power. You're going to have evil and good at the same time competing for your attention. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what's getting ready to happen. Magic, magic and power is getting ready to compete for your attention. It's going to be something. You're going to have to be grounded where you can say, oh, wait a minute. I got to go before the most girl. This, you know, I'm enjoying this conversation. This is my kind of stuff, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you have to tell the most. I wait. I got to go before the most high and make sure this real, because I can't get caught up in the emotion, because I don't want to be swayed to the left, because it's gonna really look identical one to, toward another. He said he's gonna give Lucifer the power to to, uh, to pour, call down fire from heaven. So he's gonna make the delusion look real. It's gonna be real. to see. And like I said, I feel sorry. You know, I, it's, I love my brothers and sisters that's in Israel. I do. I love them dearly, the Messianic and the non-Messianic. And I really, you know, they missing, you're missing out on a treat, you know, and if, if that's where it stops and that's, that's as far as you go in terms of being Israel and you die and that's it, hey, that's, that's it. That's cool with you. I'm, you know, that's where you, that's as far as you go. But guess what? I have something else that I think of, a more sure word that's being led by prophecy. This thing is getting ready to get real. It's already real. Right, that's right. It's already real. Angels is already here. When we came, when, they, when, we, when them 20 people stepped out the boat, the other angels was right there. Right there with them. They was there. They couldn't interfere. They couldn't stop it, but they were there. We got 14 months. This thing is about to be over with. Yes, yes. So I don't, you know what, when they start talking that crazy stuff, I don't believe in the immaculate conception, and I don't believe in the so-and-so and so-and-so, and I don't believe in the sign by me. You do it however you want to do it. But it's okay. And Shem, wait a minute, Shem is male chairs that come out fine. You do it however you want to do it. That whatever you choose, to, that's on you. True. But this is supernatural, baby. This is deeper than anything you could ever begin to. Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you this. All these men out here that's hooping and hollering in these costumes, oh, and we're going to see what they made out of in a few minutes. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We're going to see. see. Don't for real, because there's some stuff in the show up that they're going to have to okay. be showing up, no, for sure, no, for sure, that this yeah. thing, that they rooted in the ground. We can already see. Right, right. You can't argue with nobody. I don't argue with nobody. I just, I tell you the, the story from the perspective of what y'all showed me. That's it. You know, that one-third had to be redeemed, and he came back to redeem it. And he set the he set the record and he was the example. This is how it's done. Wow. When you come wow. into the knowledge of yourself and you realize you Israel, those that are mine, this is what you do. Yes. Yes, yes. Those yes. that are not mine ain't gonna understand. That's why when right. he told me he said, What do you mean when Abraham saw you? You ain't even fifty years old. He said, But before Abraham was, I am. Okay. Now listen at that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So they didn't even know who they was talking to. Walking around in the flesh. But you have to believe that in order to understand this. A whole lot of people don't believe that. And there's some people on the phone right now that's twisting up their mouth, and they don't believe that. And that's fine. We respect that. But we're going to wait and see. Because I don't argue with nobody. Let's just get to the wilderness, and we can race see. All this, you know, it, it, he, he deals with men. He do. He deals with men and women, and he does use people to do certain things. But we finna step into the supernatural of the supernatural now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. For some reason, not, don't get me wrong now, I don't hear this the wrong, wrong way because the word is that it, it brings life to me, um, no, no, no doubt. But the supernatural, when we get to talking about, that's where I come most alive. And I'm not talking about from some spooky, spooky, weird type stuff. It. When it comes to, there's something about, because I've heard a lot of the word, and so I've heard, and, and I've heard so much coming in on this side because for some reason I was just, when I heard it, I was hungry, but it was like the Father knew who, what to remove and what. I, I just wasn't moved by all of the confusion I see, but yet I was still hungry for what I saw and was listening to and, you know, reading and everything. But 
when it comes to the supernatural, there is something that just comes a lot of times supernatural in the Father. I have the things that, that, that pertain to him. I know that there are a lot of going on, but it's not, I don't know what it is, but for me, that's where I come most a lot. Not that I'm looking for signs and some type of wonder, but it's something about that that does something. It does something to me. It's like I'm, I can't even explain it, but yes, yes, it's, it's supernatural, the, the, the power of the Most High, because this it's deep. It's deep. I, I can't. It, it's just so deep, and it's beautiful. Once all this has been said and done, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But I love what you're doing. I think. Hello. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I think you know, getting everyone you know together, the, the messianic and the non-messianic. I think it's a beautiful thing because I agree that you know when we when we're going to go on. That's not, not going to be a thing of whether or not, you know, you're, you're messianic or non-messianic. Because I don't know if this pertains to that, but, you know, doesn't it speak up, you know, in the world? I don't know if it pertains to this, but when this is all said and done, I think even those who did not believe, because the word says that, you know, basically, all, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. That's you true. You know, that, that it really doesn't matter right now. You know, it's kind of our understandable why there is a disbelief and it's understandable why there is a belief, you know, um, uh, that he is. Because I don't know if this pertains to this either, but for those who do believe, you know, I, there was places in the Word where um, the Father's Son would say, you know, that those that have um, an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of, uh, well, I don't want to say the Lord, but Elohim or the Most High, let them hear what the Spirit of, of Elohim is, is saying. You know, and I think that's yeah. a supernatural thing. It's like it, you're going to hear, you're going to know, you know, it's a spiritual thing, it's, it's supernatural, it's something deep, you, it's something that is said with words, but something else is not said, and those who have an ear will hear what's not being said, and they're going to grab, they're going to catch on, if that makes any sense, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense, because he said, my feet, my, my, ch- my feet know my voice, and another, yes. they will not follow, so we know him. You know, and and, and you know, it, it's just something you. It's just something you have to know, and you just you know. I'm just saying. I, I just I can't wait until we have our our day to be able to get there to see him. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time arguing with nobody about what they think their concept is, or what they think gonna happen, or what they. I'm. I just read the word. I take it for what it says, and we keep it moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We I don't try to because some things that are that are not meant to be understood, you have to wait till you get to him, and he will be very clear about what it is he's doing. He said, I ain't hear nothing from you. I laid it out and told you everything you wanted that I was supposed to tell you so that you would know that these things were going to happen. So I ain't, I ain't had nothing from you. You knew what the thing was. You know, but a lot of people can't get it. They don't get it. You know, because people are still... They still, like I said, they still on that, oh, that's the world. He don't want us in the world, and we ain't supposed to be a part of the world. You're already part of the world. We're in this captivity, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Nothing. Nothing we can do to, is going to change that. Mm-hmm. You know, we just, we just got to, you know, we got to be there and do what we need to do. You know, and some people may change their mind. And if they do, they do it because they have read the word and, and the Most High has pricked their heart and, and changed them back. It won't be me trying to convince anybody to do anything. Because I'm not, I'm not going to be responsible one way or the other. All I can do, all we can do together collectively is just read this word together. And understanding right. him, then the knowledge will come you to click on. And if it don't, it just doesn't. It doesn't mean, you know, one way or the other that you're a bad person. Right. That's right. You know? It just happens. Yeah. But you it can't will hear it. it. You can't. Right. It's just like the people that don't know they Israel. If you can't hear it, you can't yeah. hear it. That's right. But it will come a time that they will. You know, uh, that's. That's what I, I believe. I'm thinking, but the, but the father does that because I don't believe that there's an appointed time with the father. If he does stuff on, on his timing, there's an appointed time that he knew the time for me that he was gonna wake me up because this stuff has been around, you know, for for years. You know, I'm just because I'm just coming into it. You know, this year 
this thing going on. You know, I'm looking at her mm-hmm. more years back on YouTube. I'm like, how, how did I miss this, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. been out here for years. You know, and I was like, how did I never hear about this? These were the questions that I was saying, you know, to him when he said this to me and then he was showing me where I'd never seen anything like this. He took me oh. there. I've been on YouTube before. Yeah. I've not seen it, you know. I know. I know. There, and I'm like, wow, you know, it's a little more fun, you know. So he will do it. He's the one to wake he up. Is. And I got family members right now that are very, very close to me, and just as arrogant, they think it's something that they can come on, come into on their own. Right. I know this is real. I, okay, I understand. No, you don't understand nothing. But no. you know what I do? I keep my mouth shut. I don't say nothing to nobody. But I don't do it. I'm not getting ready to get involved. I'm not doing it. Because, like I said, they'll see. Y'all came down on Mount Sinai. Okay? With a book. He came down with a book. With our names in the book. And I'm like, how did he know our names? <laughs> you talking about a being that knows all things. All things, yeah. Nobody created him. He always was. Like, well, how much sense did that make? You know, girl, I, I couldn't even grow. And you know what? When I start thinking about that, I don't even go there because I almost fried my brain trying to figure that one out. I'm, I'm just not going to even mess with that at all. But he came with a book and blueprints. He brought blueprints with him and told mm-hmm. Moshe, "Make it exactly the way I want. I tell you to make it. Don't deviate any kind of way at all." To make the breastplate like this, put the put the the, the 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 rose in there with the stones, and put the names of the children of Israel. That's how I know we was before. Put the name of the children of Israel on each stone, and put the put the put the put the stones up on the on the shoulders, you know, and, and write Israel on top of this. All oh, this is for a re- this ain't just because this didn't just happen just because he had, he needed something to do. The man, the, 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 he brought blueprints with him to duplicate something that already was. Okay. Perfect. Does everything for purpose. Yes. Yeah. But it takes an ear to hear this, and we got a lot of people on this call, and it's going to take, it, it take an ear to hear this. It do. Some people get it. They like, oh, shoot, I get it now. I understand. And some people still baffled. They just like, huh? He came, he came with he came with a book with blueprints. They think yeah. Moshe went up that mountain one time. That man went up that mountain at least eight times. Yeah. Wow. I mean, to get that information that. and to show him how he wanted it done. Wow. Specific to the wood, to the nails, to the color. The, everything was specific. Yeah. Mm. I ain't arguing with nobody else. I'm not arguing with nobody about nothing. No Israelites, no non-Israelites, no nothing. I'm not arguing. I'm trying my best to be the best I can be and get where I need to be because I've got questions I need answers. Nicodemus did the same thing. He snuck away. <laughs> Nicodemus snuck away from the Sanhedrin Council at night. They said he snuck away at night and called him like, I got a few questions. I, mean, I want to be like him. I want to sit down and be like, I got some questions. I need you to answer some questions for me. He said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb? <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> and what did the Messiah say? He said, you mean you a teacher in Israel and you don't know this? Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you, just, you faking it, man. You got the puff and fluff. You don't even know what's going on for real. Right. Supernatural that's stuff. Right, that's when you right. can take what is uh, five fish and two loaves of bread and feed thousands of people, mm-hmm. and everybody be like, "Yeah, right, that didn't happen." I don't know why you can say that because Elijah did it with the widow and the, and the flour and the cake. She had she kept on dipping stuff up out of there. Mm-hmm. She never did run out of meal. Oh, this is what I I call really being in the true nature and. Things really not being as they seem, because when you really, when he really wakes you up, it's more. It really is more than just learning that you're Israel, because it's a really deep, deep, deep spiritual thing. I mean, it 
you when the more he really, really truly awakens you and starts showing you who you really are, you really do realize mm-hmm. how much this really is. You really do realize hey, this so called reality is like this ain't even really reality. When you mm-hmm. learn it, it's it's something else. It's, it's, it's really something else. It's, 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 Beautiful man. Mm-hmm. Um, right now. Say that. Not this, but just what, what, where it's leading to. And I'm not saying I know, but I, I just, I know it's beautiful though. It's beautiful. Yes, ma'am. We can to go back to God's status. Those that make it, we going back to God's status. We won't need no. There will be no reason for husband and wife and children anymore. You have made the cut. I tell him all the time. I said it clearly says that when he re- when he resurrected, that the people saw the Old Testament saints walking around. Where they at? They didn't die again. Where they at? They got to still be walking among us. Where they at? The Bible talks about the ancients. They call them the ancients. <laughs> they were they wait a minute, the grave said the graves was the graves was busted open and the caskets was empty. And they yeah. were seen walking around Jerusalem. Where they at now? That's true. You know what? <clears throat> so they don't it doesn't say at least I've never come across the same word there now. It doesn't say what he went after after, you know, he no. And then one brilliant pastor told me, well, that means they had to die again. I said, you ain't appointed to do it to die once. Don't that just make sense? You just look at them like, really? That's the best you can come up with? Wow. He didn't take them with him when he left, so they got to still be here somewhere. Yeah. All right. Good. My goodness, my goodness. And you think about these movies, though, and these, movies, these people don't come up with this on their own. They're not that brilliant. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, a couple of stuff, they do stuff like this. Like, they show stuff like this. People who were yeah. once still been back in long years and centuries ago, and they up and you just, I don't know, I know you've seen movies like that. They don't get that from anywhere. That's something that I'm learning, that, you know, they they, they don't get that. There's a lot of truth in it. Our line. There's a lot of truth. They're pulling it from truth. And, yeah, and they got to be protected if they own the earth. And he left them here. They got to be protected so the angels have a job to do. They had to be here. They can't be nowhere else. You know? You know, you, you, just, you, just, you know, you just start thinking. You just think of it like it, like it's right there in black and white. He hid it in plain sight. It's been in plain sight the whole time. We just fell for the version that the Gentile gave us, and we made that work for us. Yeah. Yeah. It don't work yeah. for me no more. I'm like, that's not going to work for me. I mean, it's cute and it sounds good, but no, that ain't going to work for me no more. That, it's way more to it than what you're talking about. You know. But <clears throat> the story is just that's what it is. It's the story of redemption of the one third and how mm-hmm. he's going to have a thousand year kingdom to reign. And in that thousand years, the one-third that makes it back to God's status will be allowed to rule Jerusalem and, and, and rule over the children of Israel. So the children of Israel will be on the earth, and some will be marrying and having children. And they will not be supernatural. They will live for hundreds of years. And the other nations will be around. He said that if, if they, if, if it's a scripture, i got to find it where it says if the other nations don't keep the Feast of Tabernacle, he ain't going to cause no rain to come. So they won't have no food. That's in the millennial teaching, though. We're going to take that whole thing. We can already take that thing and pick it apart. That's why I wanted to start with Rome. And I'm, I'm, I'm off tomorrow, so I'm going to be putting about three or four videos up on YouTube because we got to get that Rome thing going so that everybody can understand Rome has to be in place. That's why the EU is making their moves now because the EU is the revival of the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. That's the fourth beast that Daniel talks about. Got to be in place. So, you know, this you, it is powerful when the, it's the greatest story ever told. 
Yeah. It's the greatest story ever told. You, you, we dealing with the Elo, we dealing with the God of all. There ain't nobody greater than Him. And people no tell me it ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be nothing supernatural. I don't know what life you living in. I don't see how they can say that. I just don't. They can. <laughs> they do. Uh, hey, it ain't gonna be no supernatural moment. You, you gonna be in for the shock of your life. This thing is getting ready to get powerful beyond compare. There ain't going to be nothing that nobody's going to be able to do to stop it or change it. Right. You know? right. If you make the cut, got to make the cut. You got to be able to follow instructions. Right. You know? And then we gotta, you got to do what you got to do. So, you know, we, 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 we thank the Most High for all things because he does all things well. You know, we praise him, you know, because... Oh, he gives us a taste of this thing. You know, when it's like a drug, like crack cocaine, you know, and I've never smoked crack, but I've heard people say, you know, but when you get a taste of the supernatural, you chase it like a drug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You do. It's like, I don't don't leave me. Don't just give me a little piece. I need some more. Where you at? I want to know what, what's going on. What's, what's this? Everybody can't say they've had that experience. Yep, yeah, that's true. You know, mm. and they they think you know, and what you know, the bad thing about it is when they neglect, when they try to ignore the power that the Most High is giving. I know so much stuff. I know so much stuff about this radio show. I know who's here and who's not here. You know, we got we got wardens on the show. We got uh, deputy sheriffs on the show. We got uh, uh, what you call them. Um, you call them people that be in the prisons. What you call them people? Uh, <clears throat> oh, what do you call them? <laughs> anyway, they they guard the prisoners. We got prisoners on this show. They listening to a three way. Yeah, we got all kind of stuff jumping off on this show. And then and the bad thing about it is they they don't understand the gift that they are in front of. Like the Most High, he you know like he doesn't tell us things. You know, and and, and it's like. I, it's, it's just, and you just, you know, and it's like when you truly understand the power that you're dealing with, you'll stop playing games with y'all. Mm-hmm. That's right. Stop playing you know, games. Girl, that's nice. They, they need to stop playing games because the most high tells it all. He do. Mm-hmm. They really do. We got inmates on this on this show. They come on the radio show, and they come on all of the classes through three-way calling. I don't say nothing. I just let them talk. You know, I, I, I let them listen because I know they're here. You know. Mm-hmm. We just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. It is. It really is. You know. <clears throat> it's just amazing. It's something. It's something. It really is. We got, we got, we got uh, uh, senators on the show. We got congresswomen on the show. We got all kind. We got police officers here. We got CIA, FBI list. Everybody is listening to this show. And it's just a show. We're just talking. And you know what's so crazy? Is I had a friend of mine. He was a prophet. He's deceased now. But he told me something long before I even got started. He said, I don't know what you're going to be doing. I said, I said, what do you mean? He said, you're just going to be talking. I said, I'm going to be talking. He said, yeah, you're just going to be talking. I said, well, who will be talking to? <laughs> He said, you're just going to be talking to people. He said, then you're going to think it, but you're going to say something one day and you're going to forget about it, and all of a sudden it's just going to blow up. You just you ain't going to have time to put your bags down. You ain't going to have the time to pack. You ain't going to have time to do nothing. I said, well, what's going to happen? Before I even had the radio show. Mm. People, the Israelites are scared of that kind of power. They're not used to y'all in that kind of capacity. They've never seen, why we need prophets for? We don't need no more prophets. They're scared to death of it. They don't know what to do with it. Then you got Israelites who have the gift of prophecy and scared to use it. They scared of that. I mean, well, I mean, he go deeper than that. He go deeper than speaking through a concert, you know? Scared to use it. It's like, use your gift. Why are you not using it? They scared of what somebody going to say. 
Don't you, I don't like you. Y'all in for a treat. I told him that you better hope the church don't wake up because if they do, it's a du- it's over. Mm-hmm. Ain't gonna be no more prophesying about houses and cars and stuff. It's so gonna- it's over. Mm-hmm. Tell me the truth. I don't wanna. I don't wanna know the lie. I hear some people find out, you know certain truths in the Father, and they get afraid, and they want to run from that, and they really just be pacified with the lie. But I've always used this little um, example. It, it sounds disgusting, but, you know, how people can be talking to you and see you have a little, little book or something in your nose and won't tell you because they don't want to hurt mm-hmm. your feelings. Mm-hmm. And some people talk to you not even tell them because they don't want to be shamed. They don't want to feel the, the, the shame of that. But I've always been mm-hmm. the kind of person that even if it hurt me, because it's going to help me and it's going to keep me from walking in an error state, tell me. You know, don't don't pacify mm-hmm. me with a lie. I don't want to be pacified because when everything keeps saying and everything's all said and done, I'm feeling good, live my lie to all, you know, find out that it was always a lie. I would rather know the truth. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it all to yep. fall down and I learned that I, I've been living a lie all this time. Because it's something else to find. This right here hit me hard to, to yes, learn it is. Because that 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 was a lie that I you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying to think that you were something other than and then to find out that you are Israel that that goes deep within itself and it's not yes, just it deep, but that's that's a deep thing you know what I'm saying that's that that's something serious because we're talking about yes, you know so that and, and then you doing if you don't know it, it's already bad that that yes we, we we're in a place because we walked in error. But to not know who you are and to walk in error because because you will walk in error when you don't know who you are because that's a specific way that we're to live. Yeah. Be Israel. Yeah. And if you don't know who you are, you're continuing to walk in to even run. I've seen people even run from that. People that I've talked to, you know, I don't try to press anything on anyone, but when the Father led me to tell someone, I could see, yeah, they were excited, but when they start seeing the things, how serious it is, mm-hmm. and some things you give up, things you got to let go. They, they don't want it no more. Because it's, it's no. hard, you know, to them it is, and it's it's just they don't want to give up this world. It's like, you know what, it's beautiful to know, but that's, that's just too much. That, you know, it, it was better yeah. this way. I've even felt that way, but not so much. And so, guess what, guess what? you know, different. you know why? Because they want to live in the fantasy. People right. want to live in the fantasy, but this takes the wool off their eyes. You get to see it all, you know what I'm saying? Yep. It does. It takes the wool off your eyes. You get to see the whole thing, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You get mm-hmm. to see the hate up close and personal. But you can't run because there was one point I thought, I was like, oh, and I, it was like I wanted to turn around, but it's like once you know the truth, you can't, you can run, but to have that kind of truth sitting on you, you know what I'm saying? That's, I don't know, it, 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 it's, it's too deep. You can't run from something like that. And even if you yeah. did would torture you. That's what I can see. That it's it, because it's too big of a truth and too big yeah. of a I don't know of an understanding to come into to just say you know Mm-mm, that's okay and I'm gonna run you know no because this has something to do with the one the one who sits on the throne the one who created the dog and it has something to do with who you are in him and what you're supposed to be doing. It's deeper than a, mm-hmm. I'm a you know or I'm just saying whatever you know all this stuff. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than, than what it is and just what you learn in Christianity. So some people can give that up, even though it, it sounds a little deep, but this goes way deeper than that. Way deeper than just being, you know, oh, yeah. all that. You know, you just can't run from that. People do it, but you really just can't do that. I, they got to be tortured. I'm talking about those who have found out that they're Israel and men just say, mm mm, and trying to run from that. There's a torture. I just can't see that that person, there's not a torment that don't kind of torment them to even, even, you know, know this truth and then still try to run and do something else and, you know, act like it's not, it doesn't exist. You can't do that. It's too heavy. It's too big of a truth. Hold, hold on. I got somebody else. Eric Code 504. Your mic is open. Go ahead. You're on the air. Uh, I was, I'm listening to you guys and saying that why people don't want to, um, acknowledge the fact that they are Israel. And I think I think 
that the, the problem is more than anything is the stigma of the um, stigma of saying that the Jews killed Christ. And they don't want to be associated with that. They'd rather be considered a Christian than to be associated with that, that stigma, even though that's not the way it went. The Pharisees are the ones who committed him, who, who uh, accused him. That could, that could be some and it was of it. Rome, that could be some of it. Rome that put him to death. Mm. That could be some of it. That could be some of it, too. But all of it had to happen. So When you know, we talk about that, like, the people, to Christ, so-called Christians, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, I'd rather just be, oh, yeah, go ahead and be a Christian than to have that, to deal with that. That's why I'm saying it, because I've talked to a lot of people, and mm. I, I don't want to deal with it, you know what I'm saying? They say um, the Jews killed, killed Christ. You know, my Lord is evil, and so did. on and so forth. But they I'm did. Like, you know. But like we said, Lord, it didn't all. those people... Who did it are those people who may not have been a part of the chosen, but they might have been Israel. Because every part of the dynamic no, of Israel it was is not Israel. Right. It, it, it was Esau. Well, yeah, well, when, I mean, when, you know, when, that's when, the, when, yeah. Um, yeah. When, when, um, when, um, Caesar put, um, look at the, the Edomite that was over Israel. You, oh, okay, you, you, I you know, you know what um, you, 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 yep, you, I got you, I understand. Oh, hold on, hold on. Area code 972, go ahead, your mic is open. She's going to have to call back. 972, go ahead, your mic is open. You're on the air. Hello? Can you hear me? 972, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. I just got a question when you said that uh, uh, during the thousand-year uh, millennial reign, you said that there would be people having children and all that. So are you saying people will still die during that millennial reign? And yes. it's only after uh, the thousand years up then to transform into whatever it is supposed to be? Is that what you were saying? I was, yes, I said that. What I believe, this is the way that the, re- the story reads, that I, when I put the millennial story together and you guys will be able to, to, to decipher it for yourself. But from my understanding of what the story says is that there's going to be a, the, the, the third will be chosen out of the wilderness. And, and it would have to be some of the people in the wilderness. I don't know how he's going to do that, but we will have a group of people that will be having children. Children will be playing in the streets of Jerusalem, and they will live. To be get to become a certain age, uh, like they will, they'll live to be like a hundred years, two, three hundred years old, like before. So they will die, is what I'm trying to find out. Yes, they will die. Yes, they will. And that's why the sacrifice has to come back during the millennial period, because they have to understand the whole dynamic of the sacrifice. Man, I'll, I'm coming to you, five or four. Give me one minute. I see you. Um, they have to understand the sacrifice and all of the things that go along with the temple. They have to get the same. That's why I believe that those are going to be the people who died and didn't know who they were. Those so, who died and didn't know they thinking, were. When we go into the wilderness, and like you said, he picks his third out of there, and we go into Jerusalem, and we have that thousand-year reign with Christ. In that time frame, we still will die, but I wanted to it only you know, if you make If you make the cut, you won't make You won't. But there will be some of Israel that will be reborn. Now, that's why I said it's, it's a lot, and I have to put the thing together, but I will be putting it together. I'm, doing, I'm working on it now. But if you make the third, the one-third, and you make the cut, you won't die no more. That's, that's, oh, that's what I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, no, you won't, but there will be those that will, will, will make the cut. And, I mean, they will be born, and then they will have children, and then they will die, and then they will be in that resurrection at the, at the white throne of judgment. That's a whole other issue. But once you make that cut in the thir- in the wilderness, you won't. Okay. That, that's when I believe the rapture is going to take place. That's when well, I think that the catching up the is going to be. I won't right. call it a rapture, but the catching up will, will be. After a thousand years is what you're saying, right? No, 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 before, before, before he, when, when, while we're in the wilderness and then we going through that three and a half year period or however long we're going to be in there, I believe there's going to be a shifting and people are going to be, they're going to, there's going to be a, a storytelling and the truth is going to be there. And, and people have to make a decision from that point 
whether they are going to follow with the truth or not, and those that are his will be caught up with him, and those that accept the truth, some of those will, I believe that, that, that they would have to be back here on the earth to be able to, 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 to birth back into the earth. Let me say for instance, let me how do I say this. My grandmother and grandfather would be born again. Because they died because they not knowing that they were, they didn't know the fullness of Israel. Now, they knew about the royal house of King Dawid, but I did too, but I didn't know about the fullness of Israel. I didn't. And they, they were still in Christianity, so to speak. So they died waiting on Jesus to come and get them from the rapture. Okay. So in that so my thousand aunts and time uncles frame, and them didn't know. I'm sorry, go ahead. What now? So in that thousand year time frame, you believe that they might possibly regenerate somehow? I, I do. I believe that their mother and their father will be born again, and they will come into the knowledge of who they are, and then that, because their mother and father will be born again, they'll be born again. I do. That's the regeneration. I do. I believe that. So then my last question is, I'm assuming I know that there are going to be some uh, heathens. Uh, I know we call them Gentiles, but there are some differences there. So the heathens that come in with us or the Gentiles that come in with us, after that thousand-year reign, are they in the kingdom, what I want to know? Because there's only they 12 be our, They're going to be our servants. So they're going to be this is after a thousand years, you think? They're going to be servants still? No, once the thousand servants. years is over with, I, that's a whole other issue. But during the thousand-year period, they're going to be our servants. So that part I knew. I was just trying to figure out, will they be with us? Because I think somehow we're going to get transformed back to that third that fell out. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so my mm-hmm. thought is, if we're going to go back to that third, why do you need those Gentiles still? They're going to be our servants. Well, I know, but for the, so you said after the thousand years, they're still going to be servants. No, no, after the thousand years, that's it. I mean, after that, that's the white throne of judgment. See, this is how it's supposed to happen. The thousand-year reign, Lucifer going to be, he's going to be chained up, and then the, the, the Most High is going to loose him again for a season. Right. right. He's going to be loosed again for a season. Well, he don't have to be loosed on us because we've already made the cut. So he has to be loosed on somebody to be able to try to deceive the people again. Right. Well, I, I, I got you so far, and I understand what you're saying. I just was trying to figure out after that thousand years, will those Gentiles still be among us? I have, no, I have no idea. I don't know what y'all is going to do after that period or what the Father is going to do after that period with those people. I have no idea. It's still going to be a kingdom because this will be the kingdom. This Correct. will be it. Correct. So I don't know. I don't have no idea. I mean, those are the, like I said earlier, those are the things that we have to wait now because I don't know. I, I dare not say because I really don't know. I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around all of this and having it make sense. You know, right, but I, right, I got right. a beautiful uh, 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 lesson put together, and I'm working on it now, but I have to work my way up to it because people have to know that Rome has to be in place because a lot of people say in 2019, we out of here, and it's like, no, no, no. Rome has to be in place. And it's moving right, fast, right. but it's, it's not done yet. Right. And my last question, I'm going to let you go because I'm going to go back to eating. Uh, I heard you earlier when you said that you didn't believe we should go back to Africa because that's not what y'all told you. Let me just ask this. If, uh, if it, you know, Egypt, uh, excuse me, uh, Israel was northeast Africa, and before Africa was called Africa, it was called the Garden of Eden. So mm-hmm. I'm just wondering if we're just supposed to be somewhere in that area I'm not saying Africa because I don't know, sis. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I because don't if know. you look I'm at the Pangea, all that stuff was right there in Africa. Tur-